I welcome you all to the lecture number 24 and it is second lecture of uh, module 10. So, module 10 is uh, about emotional intelligence part 1 and uh, in the earlier lecture that is lecture number 23 we have discussed about uh, we kind of gave you the introductory aspects of emotional intelligence as a concept. Uh, so, in today's lecture, I will be talking uh, more specifically about one skill. So, the uh, in the, the coming few lectures, we will be talking about, we will cover one skills in one lecture. So, which are skills that are connected to emotional intelligence. So, in today's lecture, we will be talking about self-awareness, which is one of the important skill of emotional intelligence. So, today's lecture will only cover one aspect of emotional intelligence. So, just to give you brief recap of what we discussed in the last lecture, uh, we kind of gave you the inter introductory aspects of emotional intelligence. We defined the, the various definitions that are prevailing in the literature. We kind of discussed those definitions and uh, we also discussed uh, the difference between cognitive intelligence and emotional intelligence, how they are different from each other. Uh, we also discussed a brief uh, history of emotional intelligence, so how historically this whole concept evolved. Uh, with the with the change in the ideas of how in, uh, intelligence should be looked at. Uh, we also discussed various research finding which shows how emotional intelligence is relevant and important in various dimensions of human life including you know uh, leadership, uh, including mental health, well-being uh, as well as also in the context of you know uh, professional and per personal life in the various aspects of professional and per uh, personal life. So, uh, a lot of research actually indicates uh, this is a very important concept and uh, which is ve it's very much relevant in success as well as in terms of well-being of uh, human life. So, it is kind of very in concept that is very much integrated within the human well-being and uh, perf uh, even performance particularly in the relationship aspects. Uh, at the end, we have discussed you know various models of emotional intelligence. So, in that context, we have discussed three types of model. One is called as a ability model, another is called as a trait model and the third one is called as a mix model. Uh, so, so the, the, the diverse models uh, basically were proposed based on some differences in the conceptualization of emotional intelligence. So, we have discussed the details of all these models in the last lecture. So, in today's lecture, we will be talking about one particular dimension or domain of emotional intelligence which is self-awareness. In that context, we will be discussing self-awareness and its various types. We will also discuss components of self-awareness. We will discuss blind spots of self-awareness and at the end, we will be discussing how to increase self-awareness. So, these are the some of the concepts that we will be covering in today's lecture. Uh, let us start today's lecture. So, self-awareness as we have discussed in the last lecture in every model or every conceptualization of emotional intelligence. You know, self-awareness was an integral part of it. So, you cannot kind of uh, separate emotional in intelligence from the self-awareness part of it. So, it is a very important and crucial uh, aspects of emotional intelligence and it is often highlighted in the uh, almost every conceptualization and model of emotional intelligence. So, one of the ways to kind of uh, define uh, self-awareness is, it is the ability to recognize and understand one's own emotions thoughts and behaviors and how they influence oneself and others. So, it is about your own awareness, how much you understand, how much you are able to recognize your own emotions and how it influences your thoughts and behaviors. So, your insights, your ability to become conscious of how emotions are playing or the dynamics of emotion within yourself and how it influences you and others. So, this whole spectrum, spectrum of it. So, that is the self-awareness. So, it is very simple. It basically means it is how aware you are of certain aspects of your behavior. Here, particularly we are talking about your emotional aspects and how it influences your thoughts and behavior. So, self-awareness is very critical component of emotional intelligence and it has been uh, very extensively studied in the literature and uh, it is considered as the first import, first step in emotional intelligence. You know, Without self-awareness, you cannot even talk about other aspects of emotional intelligence. So, this is generally considered as the first step in developing emotional intelligence because it enables individuals to, to recognize their emotions and understand how they impact their behaviors and interactions with others. So, this is the first step because without this you cannot even 
understand other aspects of emotions. So, self-awareness is very significant and very fundamental of emotional intelligence. Uh, research has shown that you know uh, self-awareness is uh, generally positively correlated with the, the, the uh, emotional intelligence in various aspects. Uh, people who are more self-aware are better able to regulate their emotions, manage stress and make sound decisions. So, self-awareness has been correl positively correlated with emotional intelligence in total as well as the various dimension other dimensions of emotional intelligence. So, it in that in terms of empirical literature also it is very clearly shows uh, that it is very significant aspect of emotional intelligence. Now, in the literature uh, we can also kind of distinguish uh, different types of self-awareness in terms of where the focus is. So, uh, the researcher uh, Tasha Urich, he uh, kind of uh, classified two categories of self-awareness. One is uh, internal self-awareness and another is external self-awareness. So, let us see what are these two types. So, when we talk about internal self-awareness, it is about your ability to observe your own thoughts, feelings, behavior, strengths, weaknesses in a distinct manner. So, it is more about your internal aspects, how aware you are of of the various internal aspects of yourself, particularly your feelings, your thoughts, your strengths, your weaknesses, how you are connected to all these aspects which are there within you. So, that is the internal self-awareness. Uh, so, if you are able to kind of observe and understand all this, then your internal self-awareness is higher. So, this also extends to understanding our values. So, this can be this awareness can be extended to our understanding our values, aspirations, passions, compatibility with the environment and impact of our action on others. So, basically these are all uh, internal aspects, our values, our aspirations, our passions, all this comes from our understanding of our thoughts, our feelings and they are connected to values and aspirations and passions and so on. So, all these aspects are connected to internal self-awareness. So, when we talk about internal self-awareness, it is about how well you know yourself. So, that is the question, how well you know yourself. So, that is whatever answer you give that will reflect your internal self-awareness. <clears throat> so, research has revealed that higher levels of internal self-awareness are associate, associated with various uh, other indicators like job and relationship satisfactions, personal and social control, happiness and so on. Conversely, low levels of internal self-awareness is linked to anxiety, stress and depression. One of the reason is that if you are not even kind of able to understand and kind of get exposed to what is there within you, a lot of unconscious pattern kind of keeps recycling. So, that could kind of manifest itself into higher anxiety, stress and depression. So, that is uh, internal self-awareness. The internal, uh, sorry, the external self-awareness on the other hand is about your capability to understand how other perceive view us concerning our thoughts, feelings, behavior, strengths and weaknesses. So, it is again it is self awareness your own self awareness, but you are understanding about how others see you. So, that is how others perceive you related to your thoughts, feelings, behavior, your strength and weaknesses. So, internal is about how you understand all the internal aspects, external self-awareness is how others perceive you, you are understanding about how others perception, so, that is external self-awareness. So, it is about how well you understand how others see you, you know, how well you understand how others see you, how others see you, how others react to you. So, the perception of other people about your different thoughts, feelings, behavior, strength and weaknesses that ability to understand is external self-awareness and that is also very important because you know then you can kind of uh, kind of under, uh, kind of regulate your behavior according to your understanding of others perception. So, external self-awareness is again your self-awareness, but how others see you that is your capability to understand that is external self-awareness. So, individuals with higher external self-awareness are more likely to demonstrate empathy towards others. So, basically if you understand more about how others look at you, basically you are more likely to understand others perspective. So, that is empathy, you know, kind of looking from the others perspective. Uh, they can also observe how others people perceive them, 
leading to potential behavior modification. So, if you know how others are perceiving, you can kind of modify your behavior according to the context. Uh, that improves the chances of building better relationships. Others also perceive them as effective individuals. So, if you can modulate your behavior according to the perceptions of other, wherever it is important and necessary is not necessarily every context it is uh, it, it should be modulated. Uh, so, that modulation according to the context whatever is required will come if you understand others perspective and if you have higher empathy and so on. So, that is that is the external self awareness and it is also very important in terms of relationship building and harmonious relationship and so on. So, that is external self awareness. Now, generally we can assume generally we may assume that having high level of one type of self awareness would translate into high levels of another type. So, generally people can in terms of layman understanding one can assume that if somebody has higher internal self, uh, self awareness automatically it will translate as uh, higher external self awareness. Uh, but uh, the research has shown that actually it is not true. You may have higher internal self awareness, but you may have low external self awareness that is very much possible, not a necessary, but it is possible. So, the correlation between them may not be very strong and positive, you know. So, that is something research has found that these two kind of self awareness are kind of distinct, they may not be very strongly correlated to each other. So, internal self awareness and external self awareness are actually distinct from each other. So, these are two different qualities people may not have both of them all the time meaning that one can be highly self aware internally, but lack external awareness and vice versa. So, some people may be very may have very high internal self awareness, but may lack external self awareness. So, it is very much possible or vice versa. So, that is also possible based on these two types of self awareness. Uh, so, different kind of patterns of behavior have been identified. So, you can see here uh, uh, kind of professor Uric kind of you know uh, divided this whole uh, different categorization based on you know this uh, high based on the internal self awareness high low and external self awareness high low they can interact and kind of this four combination could come. Uh, and possibly lead to four types of patterns of behavior. So, if you see here high internal self awareness and low external self awareness. So, this is a possibility where the somebody a person has very high internal self awareness, the internal awareness is very high, but the external self awareness is very low. So, this is let, let us take this case. So, this will lead to case of an individual called insulated individual. So, that individual have, will have characteristics like they will have fair understanding of their own self because they have high internal self awareness, they understand about themselves very much good, they can do lot of introspection and so on. Uh, they may be pleased with their current self, their own self they may be comfortable because they have higher internal self awareness, uh, limited uh, self development, limited windows for feedback because feedback and other things can come from others. So, they may have very uh, less understanding of how others perceive you. So, in that sense uh, feedback and uh, kind of self development could also be limited in that sense. So, it, it may be just limited to one's own understanding of oneself. So, such individuals they, they use the term insulated kind of individual. Now, another combination is that people with high internal self awareness and kind of we will we'll talk about this at, at the end. So, another possibility is that people have low internal self awareness uh, and low external self awareness, both are low internal self awareness is also low external is also low. So, such kind of individual uh, they termed it as a self ignorant kind of individuals. So, they have low understanding of themselves, lack of understanding of one's strength and weaknesses are also they do not understand have much understanding of what are the strengths and weaknesses they have. Uh, they uh, kind of dependence on assurance externally, low understanding of others perception of self. So, they, they also have low understanding of how others perceive them. So, it is kind of ignorance, you know, not much awareness about how to interact with other, how, what is how others are perceiving, how they themselves need to, uh, they are also ignorant about themselves, their own strength and weaknesses. So, that is another possibility. 
Uh, another possibility is that people have low internal self awareness, but high external self awareness you know. Their internal self awareness is low, but external awareness is very high, they are very outward oriented you know. So, such individuals uh, he uh, kind of named as amiable kind of individuals and uh, their characteristics include like they focused on perception of others, they focus too much on how others are looking at them you know that is too much of focus without much understanding of themselves. Uh, low in introspection because self awareness is low, uh, they are ready to uh, compromise self interest, their behavior is mostly modulated by how others are looking at them. So, they will modulate too much based on how others are looking at them, how others are perceiving. So, all the time kind of pleasing others that kind of behavior would be more prominent among these individuals focused on making others happy because when you do not have much of your own self awareness your and externally too much focused on external self aspects then your behavior is too much will be kind of modulated all the time based on others perceptions and and making other people happy. So, that is another possibility and the last possibility is that both are high internal awareness is also high external awareness is also high. So, that is self aware individual. So, that is typically called as the in a typical sense self awareness individuals with high self awareness means this they also have internal self awareness high external self awareness also high. So, that is the actual self awareness people who are highly self aware means they have both of these two. So, they will have good understanding of their selves good understanding of how others are perceiving them open to feedback high on introspection. So, all these qualities will be there. So, that is the typical case of self awareness. So, these four possibilities are there and some people may be people all the people will can be can come into one of these categories you know based on their self awareness internal and external self awareness. We all will fall in one of these categories. Uh, Professor Uric also kind of um, gave in terms of leadership there is also four possibilities which are very similar to what we have discussed earlier based on these combinations only a high uh, internal self awareness and external self awareness high low in both the dimensions. In the context of leadership you know there could be four categories again four archetypes of leaders. So, that was more general what we have discussed in the context of leadership there are also four possibilities and the characteristics are kind of similar because their self awareness is in that kind of congruent to what we have discussed. So, again here it is also possible. So, let us say first case is high internal self awareness. So, that is uh, here it is high. So, that is internal self awareness and here it is low external self awareness high internal self awareness. So, so this is introspectors kind of individual which was very similar to what we have discussed earlier also, but it is in the context of leadership. So, people with leaders with high internal self awareness and low external. So, they are very internally aware, but not much external self awareness. Uh, in that context leaders could be called as introspectors. So, they are clear on who they are, but do not uh, challenge their own views or search for blind spots by getting feedback from others. So, this such such leaders will not get receive uh, or will not try to get feedback from other people because they are too much focused on their internal self awareness. You know how others are perceiving that they do not really much focus on it or they are kind of blind on lot of how others are perceiving them. They will kind of keep doing what they think because their own ideas and thoughts processes are they are very much focused on that. How others are giving feedback and all these things will be very in kind of in the background they will not give much focus on that feedback from others and all these things will be less. So, this can harm the relationships and limit their successes. So, such kind of leaders will have very limited success because leadership means your connection with other people is very important and uh, people with low external self awareness will not be able to make that connection or understand others perspective. So, this is one category of leaders who are called introspectors. Uh, there is another category of leaders who are called seekers means here again 
low external self awareness and low internal self awareness. So, both are low again you know. So, again this is also a possibility some leaders could be like this. So, they do not yet know who they are what they stand for. So, their stands will not be very clear because they are not clear what they want and how their teams see them. They also do not know much about how their teams look at them. As a result, they might feel stuck for frustrated with their performance and relationship. So, such person may feel lot of frustrations because they also do not know much about what they stand for and there is no clarity in their own mind and they also do not have much connection with other people and understand how others perception what others want. So, they will be kind of kind of stuck and frustrated those kind of thing. The third category of uh, leaders could be called pleasers basically they have a high external self awareness and low internal self awareness. So, they can be called as pleasers in a sense again externally very externally oriented and they do not have much of their internal awareness. So, they can be so focused on appearing uh, a certain way to others that they could be overlooking what matters to them. So, they will be all the time pleasing others and they will all the time modulate their behavior as per the requirement of the environment or what people see. Over time, they tend to make choices that are not in service of their own successes and fulfillment. So, it can work in some context if you are just focusing on what others want. Uh, but probably if, if you lack o your own clarity that man can also impact your own satisfaction and other things. So, it has its own limitations and the third one is again uh, the aware leader. So, we have both high internal self awareness, high external self awareness. So, they are high in both these dimensions. So, they know who they are, what they want to accomplish, there is a clarity and seek out and value their opinions. So, others opinions, they also seek others opinion all the time. They do not think that I am the best and I should do what I want. They all the time accommodate and take feedback from other people and kind of incorporate those feedback in their decision making process. This is where leaders begin to fully realize the benefits of self awareness. So, for a normal individual as well as for leaders uh, this self awareness where both internal as well as external self awareness when it is high uh, that is uh, where you know, people are truly self aware and uh, that is where emotional intelligence will be also high. So, that aspect is very important and uh, mm, so, but, but not necessarily all people will have this kind of self awareness where internal is also high, external is also high people may not have always this awareness. So, that is what is a kind of research findings clearly reflects. Now, let us also talk about what are the possible components of self awareness. So, types we have discussed. So, what is there in the self awareness itself? So, Goldman uh, uh, we have discussed in the last lecture the model of Goldman which comes under mixed model and we discussed that uh, Goldman talked about the different dimensions of uh, emotional intelligence and obviously self awareness was one dimension and he talked about three important components of self awareness. So, these are emotional awareness, accurate self assessment and self confidence. So, these are three important components of self awareness according to the Goldman's model. So, because Goldman's model very specifically talks about the components, so we will be talking about these components. So, emotional awareness is again a uh, kind of uh, understandable in a sense that you know your capacity to identify your own emotions and their impacts, impacts individual who possess this ability are basically these are some of the uh, indicators of high emotional awareness. So, like they will can recognize emotion they are experiencing in the moment and comprehend the causes, recognize as well as comprehend the causes also, grasp the connection between their emotion, thoughts and behavior, how emotions are influencing them, they can also understand that connections, realize how their emotions may impact their performance, they can also understand how it is impacting my performance and behaviors. This also allows their personal values to guide their emotional response, you know. Uh, 
so kind of uh, they will also kind of uh, their personal values will, will also kind of guide and direct their emotions so basically it's about more clarity more understanding uh, more in touch with the kind of emotion that you experience what kind of emotions you feel more what are your kind of emotions that becomes more habitual so all this understanding is about emotional awareness you know people experience emotion all the time some emotions are very strongly habitually experienced by people for example some people may be very angry with little bit of disturbance they can become angry or irritated and those kind of thing no so understanding those things patterns of your emotions and that that is very important you know so that is a very important aspect of uh, emotional awareness having a clear understanding of one's emotions and how they affect on behaviors is also very important for effective communication and relationships that is very understandable your relationship will also depend on your emotional awareness we have already discussed these aspects in the model itself in the last class additionally emotional awareness can play a vital role in maintaining one's physical and mental well being so this is very important because a lot of therapies actually focus on emotional awareness especially if people have you uh, know disturbances in emotions and so on because they are not in touch with their own emotions and how they are expressing those things so a lot of unconscious aspects could play and express themselves in terms of disorders so emotional awareness is could be one of the important steps to kind of uh, release lot of this uh, destructive emotions and kind of uh, increase our well being and mental health second is accurate self assessment is also part of self awareness how accurately you are able to assess yourself so it naturally comes from the awareness itself only if you are aware of yourself then only you can do accurate assessment without awareness you cannot do as accurate assessments so accurate assessment is basically means understanding about your strengths your weaknesses your internal resources what you have your limitations and all these things are about your assessment you know assessment means you know your all the positives and negatives what are your weak points what are your strengths what are your limitations what are the resources you have what are the strengths you have mentally and also otherwise so all this is about your assessment if you can understand all these things that means you are doing uh, better accurate self assessment and it will increase your self awareness so acknowledging weakness sometimes is and limitations of yourself could be difficult for a lot of people because we don't want to accept our weaknesses and limitations uh, especially if you are not self aware no we are not very much aware of other things if somebody else says you have this weakness uh, generally people don't want to accept this and become defensive about it uh, so that is what you know accepting and uh, kind of uh, kind of you know accepting what uh, weaknesses ones have whatever you have is also part of self assessment you know so acknowledging weakness and limits can be very challenging for a lot of people especially because we are not aware of ourselves and if some somehow we understand it let's say someone else says that generally we are not able to accept that especially in a fast paced and competitive work environment uh, however it is essential for both emotional intelligence and personal well being understanding weakness is also very important that is why where you can then work on uh, and improve upon it uh understanding strengths are also very important because many time we may not know what strengths we have and we may not really refine them so if you understand what strengths you have you can refine them and make it in a better kind of more and more strengths can be refined and made them more as in your resource also many people even strengths also don't they don't work on it so both strengths and weaknesses has to be understood and uh, but weaknesses one the problem is that people some, sometimes become very defensive about it one of the reason is that because the people don't want to accept that you know especially unconsciously this is this is what uh, is how we are programmed so individuals who are adept at self assessment not only have a comprehensive understanding of their strengths and weaknesses but also have a good sense of humor about themselves and their limitations so you can accept whatever limitations you have without really making grudge about it so that's the whole idea uh, they are generally introspective derive lessons from their experiences and receptive to feedback so these are the keys to self awareness in in terms of accurate assessment of yourselves third one is self confidence is it is generally an outcome if you are kind of know yourself 
ins and out self confidence could be a natural thing uh, because then you are comfortable in what you are you know you are accepting whatever you are so that self acceptance gives you a sense of confidence sense of high self esteem uh, when we become defensive we don't want to accept the limitations we have then uh, we lose confidence probably that because we want to show something else once you accept whatever the way you are and uh, with all your weaknesses and strengths self confidence could be a natural thing the feeling of self worth that helps individuals to feel secure and unthreatened by the people and circumstances around them so that sense is self confidence so you feel a sense of self worth and you are not all the time threatened by how others are kind of judging you and so on so that sense of self awareness gives you that self confidence so having high self confidence allows us to trust other more and better handle criticism and feedback in a positive manner then you don't become defensive don't want to all the time show that i am the best or something like that artificially don't want to people then don't project themselves so that is uh, the another aspect of self awareness component so so we have discussed the different types of self awareness and different components of self awareness now let us talk about a little bit more about blind spot of self awareness because it's not easy to develop self awareness there are a lot of blind spots people are not really uh, we may think that we are self aware but actually we are not so let us see what are the blind spots to self awareness again uh, dr tashi yurush who did a lot of research on self awareness uh, he reported some of the important findings from his decades of research one is that self awareness is a rare quality not not many people are actually self aware generally we may think we are self aware but we are not although many individuals perceive themselves as possessing self awareness only a small portion of individuals according to his research is it is about 10 to 15% of actually meet this requirement so very small percentage actually only 10 to 15% individuals could be called as is a general uh, statistics or general percentage uh, higher people this percentage of people could be called as really self aware so it's very rare and it's very small number of percentage are actually self aware so that is one thing a second is that you know people with it's a kind of counter intuitive or paradoxical finding that people with lot of experience or people in the higher power actually these things actually hinder self awareness it actually reduces self awareness generally we think that people with high more and more experience they have they will become more aware no actually research shows it may not be true that people with a lot of experiences especially let's say in the work context or job professions and so on and people in the higher power actually these things actually hinder self awareness because it kind of blocks their self awareness so merely going through life experiences is not enough to cultivate self awareness so just going through life experiences may not increase your self awareness that something doesn't happen automatically you know sometimes individuals are oblivious of their ingrained behavioral pattern and do not take initiative to analyze them critically because a lot of unconscious patterns are there which actually hinder self awareness and people are not kind of they don't want to look at that do not take initiative to analyze them critically and then you no know, go beyond them according to study conducted on managers it was discovered uh, that the more experience they had the less capable uh, they were of objectively evaluating their leadership effectiveness so again it is come from the professor urix uh, study that he found that uh, managers especially people who are in the managerial position uh, the more experience they have the less capable they were evaluating their own leadership skills so higher they are experienced actually they are less likely to or capable of evaluating their leadership effectiveness so generally they may overestimate that you know they are very good and they are you know very effective on whatever so but they are objectively they are most of the time not able to understand or their assessment is not accurate objectively so if you let's say if taking feedback from other people and so on so these people in the more experienced in the higher position they may not be very accurate or they are not very self aware about what they their capabilities are in terms of maybe leadership and other things studies have found that it is not always uh, true that people learn from experiences and that experiences does not necessarily help people to distinguish false information so experience itself may not lead to more awareness 
Additionally, believing oneself to be highly experienced can prevent people from seeking contradictory evidences and questioning their assumptions. It is also possible because when you are you become highly experienced, then you think you are on the top of your business, whatever it is, and if anybody says you have some problem, probably will not accept it. You no, know, that experience kind of hinders. Uh, prevent people from seeking contradictory evidences and question that and questioning their assumptions you know so they kind of deeply held believe they kind of assume that they know everything or whatever they have learned enough and so on so if anything comes which contradicts their assumptions they may not accept it so that is another problem you now you kind of unconsciously believe that you know and uh, anything that is contradicted to what you assume you simply just brush it aside Furthermore, having more experience can lead to false sense of confidence about one's performance and self-knowledge. You may have a false sense of confidence about your own performance and your knowledge, which may not be corroborated by other people. So you may think because of your experience and so on. So, this can happen for some people, not necessarily every experienced people will not have it, but it is possible because sometimes this experience hinders this whole self-awareness. So, Dr. Uh, Again, Tasha Yurich uh, also uh, taking support from other studies like you know that were conducted in the similar line. He also kind of summarized and uh, reported that more experienced managers were less accurate in their ass assessing their leadership effectiveness compared to the less experienced manager. So, less experienced manager were more able to actually and uh, kind of accurately assess themselves as compared to more experienced managers. The more power a leader holds, the more likely they are to overestimate their skills and abilities. The more they have power in the powerful position, more likely to overestimate themselves, their abilities. They are more likely to overestimate. Whatever they have objectively, they will overestimate that. So, that is also another finding. Higher level leaders were more likely to overvalue their skills compared to others perception in 19 out of 20 competencies in that study including emotional self-awareness, accurate self-assessment, empathy, trustworthiness and leadership performance. So, like this in 20 parameters, 19 out of these 20 parameters, they were overvaluing those skills. Whatever they have, they were kind of overestimating that uh, people in the higher level leadership positions. So, that also shows higher power could kind of block their self-awareness. Why this happens? What could be possible reasons? Uh, according to uh, Professor Urich, there primary there are two primary reasons. One is uh, firstly uh, due to their higher position, senior leaders have fewer people to above them who can give them honest feedback. So if you are in the very high position, obviously you don't see people above. There are very few people who are above you who can give you feedback. So you don't get feedback much. And lower level people, they don't, they may not give you feedback, or even if they give you, probably you may not accept them. Secondly, people may be less comfortable giving constructive feedback to leaders who hold more power. So, if somebody is in a powerful position, people generally don't want to give constructive feedback, which is which are actuality, because they may be afraid of you know impact. What will be the uh, what will be the impact of such suggestions? as they fear it might negatively affect their careers. So, that is one thing. So, they do not, they actually do not get much feedback, right kind of feedback. As leaders gain more power, uh, they become less willing to listen to feedback. So, that becomes very natural because you think you are on the top most position, why you need to listen other, listen to others people. This could be either because they believe they know more, one could be that they think they know more, that is why they are in the topmost position. Why should they, lis they listen to other people? Uh, more power than sub, uh, more knowledge than their subordinates, or because seeking feedback may come at a cost. It could be your own psychological cost. You may not want to hear or listen to that. So there may be some kind of cost involved in it. So the thing is that you know it may not necessarily happen to everybody, but it happens to a lot of people. At, at least research shows that because. Th there is a kind of mental blocks happens when you are in a high position or you are more experienced that blocks prevents you to become self aware. So, one reason is that you may not get the right kind of feedback people may not give because there are very few people above you 
and uh, people lower than you may not give you feedback. So, that is because of fear and other things. So, because of all these reasons, uh, uh, self awareness may not be connected to experience and other things. Now, one can overcome this obviously, uh, these blocks of self awareness by seeking more critical feedback. So, that has to be willingness from that person's pers side that they should be willing to listen to feedback, even if it is coming from lower position or whoever it is, which is shown to be effective in increasing self awareness and leadership effectiveness. For effective leadership, this is very important that one has to be open to critical feedback, whatever may be the source of that feedback. The most successful leaders seek feedback from multiple sources such as bosses, peers, employees and boards. Whether they are above you, below you, does not or equal to you. Multiple sources of feedbacks one has to be willing to listen. Uh, that is a very important for a successful leader. In addition, people who improve their external self-awareness did so by seeking feedback from caring critics who have their best interest and heart and verifying the feedback with others to avoid overcoming, uh, overreacting or making correct corrections based on the peers assumptions. So, what is very important is that you know for improving this external aspect of self awareness, feedback from caring critics you know sometimes people may give feedback out of their jealousy or out of putting you low or something like that then obviously those feedback will not work one has to understand the feedback should come from the authentic sources or caring critics what the word is used people who really care for you in some in terms of they are not in terms of you know competing you or any kinds of thing so th those feedbacks actually are the real feedback uh, which are in the best interest of uh, of one's well being uh, kind of is very important you know right source of feedback is also very important because one can give any kind of feedback but that those feedback may not be true so, that cannot increase one's self awareness. So, that is very important. So, uh, accepting critical awareness is uh, critical feedback is very important and understanding the right source of feedback is also very important, but one has to be willing to listen to that. So, that is how one can remove those blockages. So, how to increase self awareness? Few things we have already discussed that is feedback part uh, just to continue with that. So, one way to self awareness, so that was more in the context of leadership and other thing, but for general individuals also feedback is very important for increasing self awareness, because we many times we may not be aware of lot of things within us, because of lot of a lot of inherent automatic patterns, we cannot know everything we, about us. So, many times people tell you, okay, you have this problem. So, that feedback will kind of uh, should lead you to think that whether you have this or should I change it or those kind of questions should come to you. So, one that feedback is very important for self awareness. So, getting feedback is a powerful tool uh, for enhancing self awareness particularly in organizational setting where 360 degree feedback is an effective method. In lot of this organization especially in the corporate culture nowadays this word is used like 360 degree feedback where uh, anonymous feedbacks are taken from all peers all people in the organizations who are working with that individual it could be below them uh, you know or in in kind of similar position in them or maybe above them all peers who are working with that individual feed anonymous feedback he may not know who is saying what so that is called 360 degree feedback you know so those are taken in, mostly done in the organizational setting in the corporate world and uh, that gives you kind of lot of uh, many time you know helps you to enhance your self awareness and understanding about yourself and your performance. However, receiving feed feedback can be difficult because it may challenge our self image and deeply held beliefs about ourselves. Many times we may believe so many things about ourselves and other may say you are not that. So, it can challenge your uh, you know, beliefs. So, which sometimes become problematic for a lot of people they cannot accept that. So, it takes a lot of courage sometimes to be open to feedback and willing to consider it thoughtfully we do not have to listen to everything, but if something has makes sense and you know your behavioral pattern is leading to this kind of thing, then one need to ponder about it. So, selecting the appropriate individuals to receive feedback again we have said is very important. Who is giving you feedback is very important. Individual with prejudices and ulterior motives uh, 
will need not be able to provide the genuine and uh, right kind of feedback and they are more likely to either soften the criticism or intentionally advance their own objectives. So, those biased feedback obviously will not help you and may not lead you to higher self awareness. So, right source of feedback is very important. So, when seeking feedback it is critical to remember that we are entering a vulnerable position and the productive approach to begin receiving feedback is to seek from those we trust. So, seeking feedback from caring and trustworthy people are very important. So, that is how one aspect where we can enhance self awareness through feedback. Second is through introspection. We can also kind of enhance self awareness, but with certain conditions. So, self reflection or introspection is also another way to enhance self awareness that you kind of introspect and think about yourselves and what is whatever happens. So, this involves setting aside time for reflect on our thoughts, speech and behavior in a quiet and distraction free environment. So, in a quiet environment where there is no distraction you think and reflect what has happened about your thoughts, about your uh, speech, your behavior, what are the consequences. So, you reflect and think why this has happened. So, kind of this kind of is 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 kind of focusing on uh, your own behavior or your thought processes uh, that is called introspection. However, true uh, true in, in, in introspection could be uncomfortable for a lot of people. It may require us to confront unpleasant emotions. Many times introspection leads you to uncomfortable zones and you know you have to face those things also. Some individual even may seek distraction because they are not able to introspect. They will be always distracted because it is not easy to face those things. Some people may seek distraction also. However, if we invest time and effort in the right kind of introspection, again introspection has to be in the right process. So, we will talk about that now. We can become more self aware. Without making a conscious effort to reflect on ourselves, self awareness is unlikely to develop. So, you have to put effort, otherwise, nothing will happen. Now, however, research interestingly shows that introspection, all kinds of introspection may not lead to self awareness, you know one has to do the right kind of introspection. So, introspection or any kind of introspection or any way of doing introspection may not improve self awareness. Why? Now, see let us see. That, so, developing self awareness through introspection has its own challenges, you know surprisingly it provides less benefit than expected. Not all kinds of introspection leads to benefits. According to research relying solely on introspection to examine one's own feeling and behavior result in lower self awareness. In fact, in, it can decrease self awareness in some context. Uh, the issue lies not with the introspection itself, but with the approach. So, the problem is not introspection, introspection can do lot of benefits, but how you do it will determine the impact of it. So, there the right process has to be there. So, according to Yurik, uh, uh, he uh, we use generally a wrong approach to introspection that is we ask why. So, whenever something goes wrong we generally ask why, why this has happened. So, research shows this why question is not very, very productive you know we uh, generally you know do not learn much by asking why question such as when something goes wrong or something happens or you know some kind of uh, rejection from some individual we generally ask why you are liked by or why why you like or dislike someone or why you are rejected why i was i am rejected so why this, this question most of the time when people ask in the introspection this is not effective in fact it is it seems to be counter counterproductive in many context so introspecting using why question has been found to be not very uh, appropriate not very productive so generally it's an ineffective question most lot of research actually indicates why? So, we will see some of the reasons for this. So, during the process of introspection, the question why can pose a challenge to developing self awareness. So, the why question itself can be a problem for self awareness. For example, when we ask ourselves, why did I lose my temper with a team member? Let us say you lost a temper and you are doing introspection, why did you lose the temper? We may not have a clear answer to because of subconscious thoughts, feelings and motives which we do not have access to. Many times we become angry or emotional because of many subconscious reasons for which we do not have access to why we feel that way. Thus, in the heat of moment you do something, but you may not really know why this has happened many times. Now, you will find some justification in the, in the surroundings or with the person itself. 
So, this makes it difficult to find answers why answer question, especially in the emotional context. So, this can make it difficult to eliminate biases while attempting to answer the why question. So, many times you may not be able to answer why question and you will make up some biased answers. So, our inherent programming can create a challenge in the introspection process when we ask such questions. For instance, when we ask ourselves why did I lose my temper with John, our initial thought may be like I warned this person multiple times and my losing temper was the only option. He was not hearing me and those kind of thing. Now, this is a kind of defense mechanism. You are kind of defending yourself. That may not be the actual case. There may be other reasons which are deeper. You have, you have not access to those reasons. So, asking why question many times you know may lead to more biased answers. You, you will defend yourself by finding some justifications. So, that is a kind of rationalization defense mechanism. This may not lead you to increase awareness. You will only justify your biases. Now, this why question can also become unproductive, especially it can lead to more negative remunerative thoughts, especially when one asks why let us say some bad thing happens and you ask why this has happened. This question may lead to focus on your own shortcomings, your weaknesses, your fears, insecurities and you may dwell on that and it may become more unproductive, you know. Uh, and may contribute to depression and anxiety. So, sometimes it can be unpro un unproductive in a sense and uh, you know it may actually hinder self awareness and it be can become un far further unproductive and lead to more depression and anxiety. So, according to uh, Uric, the more effective approach is for introspection is to ask what rather than why. So, this what question is more important rather than this why question. So, this is what approach is more important and more productive in introspection. So, instead of asking why did I lose my temper with John, you can one can uh, which can lead to lot of defensive justification asking what triggered the behavior or actions. So, then more self awareness could come to that if you ask what triggered this behavior rather than why. So, so, this can provide a better understanding and increase self awareness. So, we will see some more examples. So, in a study by psychologist uh, Hickson and Swan in 1993, uh, undergraduates were given negative feedback uh, on their sociability, likability and uh, interestingness as a person. So, the participants were given some negative feedback on their sociability, their likability, some negative feedback was given to them. One group of student was asked to introspect on why. They were asked why you are given this negative feedback, find out this, do this introspection, asking why question, why they receive this feedback, while another group were asked to introspect using what could be the possible reasons for this feedback. So, one group was asked you, you, you do introspection for one group, why you are given this feedback, another group were asked same feedback, but they were asked to introspect using what question, what could be the possible reasons. So, just why and what differences were there. The study found that the group that introspected using why paradigm was more likely to engage in justifying and defending themselves. They are focusing more on kind of um, kind of defending themselves at saying no, these justifications are not right and those kind of defensive beha behavior was more prevalent while the group that introspected using what paradigm was more open to learning from feedback. So, they were more open. So, this just difference in the questioning led to different outcomes. Some more examples, let us say John, a new customer service leader received negative feedback from an employee and sought to understand it better. Let us say a person in a service and received negative feedback. He can ask why question also, he can ask what question also. So, rather than asking why did you say it this about me, one can ask why did you give me this uh, negative feedback, which can lead to lot of you know thought processes and, and the defensive behavior, I am not like this, it is not right and all kinds of possible things could happen. On the other hand, if uh, John, so this, this is actually not right, so we are using the was John, John if he chooses to ask what steps can I take in future to improve my performance, what could I take? So, I got negative feedback. So, what can be done? So, then it could lead to more productive approach in terms of dealing with it. Why question can create unproductive things and it may not help you much in that context. So, that is one example. 
similarly you know different uh, examples are there like another business owner david uh, was faced in the reality that the business he had recently bought was no longer profitable so he started a business and it no longer working he may ask why wasn't i able to things turn around so asking this why question will not really solve anything he will become more depressed and maybe more anxiety will come because he will focus on all the negatives why did he fail why did he are not able to turn it into profit so he will focus on his own inabilities own insecurities and so on but he realized that he needed to in fact of finding solution in, instead of dwelling on why he failed he can ask what steps do i need to take to move forward so that is more productive and can lead to much better outcomes so it's a kind of shift in questions can lead to shift in mindset itself to sum it up uh, we can conclude uh, that individuals and leaders who prioritize developing their internal and external self awareness both the awareness should kind of should uh, be enhanced seek candid feedback from trustworthy critics seek feedback from trustworthy critics who are really neutral and they have best interests and use what instead of why question can improve the self perceptions and reap the benefit of increased self knowledge so these are the keys to increase self awareness and this is the summary of the findings all the findings that we have discussed and at the end obviously the mindfulness practice itself can enhance our self awareness which we have already discussed lecture number 22 was devoted to this whole thing that this is a technique to enhance our self awareness you know obviously that takes time uh, and uh, everybody may not be aware of it and may not be able may not do it so but this practice can enhance lot of deeper biases and deeper automatic unconscious patterns it can expose and one can become much more aware so practice of mindfulness can lead to lot of benefits that we have already discussed in a full lecture so that is obviously is there so these are some of the things about self awareness so it is one of the most fundamental component of emotional intelligence and uh, these are some of the important findings related to it with increased self awareness or emotional intelligence will also increase so in the next lecture we'll talk about the another component of emotional intelligence so like this we will continue so with this i'll stop here thank you mm -hmm.